In today's video, we're going to talk about do corn snakes need UVB? Now, we're going to start this video with just laying down, yes, we're all aware that corn snakes will survive without UVB. They will not only will they survive, but they will go on to reproduce too. However, there's been a lot of recent development in research into corn snakes, particularly surrounding corn snakes and UVB. So our scale of does it need it might have changed in recent years. So what we're going to do is dive into this. So before it even does anything to the corn snake itself, UVB has a great effect upon the killing of fungi, bacteria and viruses on the scale surface of a corn snake that's basking in UV. It's also pleasurable to corn snake because skin cells secrete beta endorphins in response to UVB. So it just feels good to the corn snake. Now, some people might not put a lot of weight to that, they might not care, but a lot of compassionate keepers will obviously put a lot of weight towards that. The big important thing that we hear a lot is that corn snakes get enough vitamin D from their diet, enough to reproduce, and they don't actually need UVB. And that hinges upon the corn snakes getting enough vitamin D from the rodents. If we look at this paper that gave a control group of corn snakes no UVB and then gave a treatment test group access to UVB and then over a period of time tested their blood values before and after. So they test the blood serum for 25 hydroxyvitamin D. That's basically the levels of vitamin D in the snake's blood. So what reptiles do is to make sure they don't go into hypervitaminosis and produce too much vitamin D that they go into overdose, they have a self-limiting process, especially under UVB. So what they'll do is they'll reach an optimal level and then once it reaches this optimal level, different processes will come in and start converting things into other inert metabolites and move things away, effectively having a braking system so that a corn snake doesn't go into overdose. Well, this study actually found that those corn snakes that were only on rodents had their blood vitamin D values rise by 211%. So if their values were truly enough from a rodent, they were going to be near the optimal level, right? So how can it rise 200%? It can't, which means their values were very, very, very low. Now, that's not low enough to start expressing that in ways like metabolic bone disease. They still have enough vitamin D to allow them to use it for systemic effects like calcium metabolism. But they do not have enough to have optimal levels like people think they do. So it's just enough to get by. And there's also just enough for producing viable offspring. But it isn't just looking at cold, hard blood values. Actually, corn snakes are behaviorally affected by UVB exposure as well. They will bask, behaviorally bask, and obviously that'll be pleasurable, leading into experiences of positive welfare, but also it increases the activity levels of corn snakes. In this paper, there was a positive correlation between exposure to UVB in a treatment group compared to the activity levels in a control group. So exposure to UVB has a positive relationship with activity levels. So if we're thinking about breeding corn snakes, yes, you can breed it without UVB and it does work. But if we're thinking about having more vitamin D in the system, more so than just the absorption of calcium and that systemic effect, and actually having enough to go into the immune system and enough vitamin D to go in over into the embryo and give the embryo ad limitum amounts of vitamin D as much as it needs, be able to strip more calcium available to give that to the embryo and the developing eggshell because they can strip more calcium out of the gut because they have more vitamin D. By giving them that UVB, you're basically giving them constant access to make as much vitamin D as possible. And at a time like breeding, where that is absolutely a critical hormone to have, it's very unusual that it isn't considered really, really useful for breeding. Even in the paper we previously mentioned, they found some evidence that having UVB caused increased weight gain in juvenile corn snakes compared to ones without it. UVB exposure is incredibly useful and beneficial as a tool for breeding corn snakes. 
And if we're thinking about a recovering female, well, it's great for immune health and the repair of nerves following injury. You think they're pushing out those eggs and they're a little bit sore and they've got a little bit of healing to do. That would be amazing to have that to aid in that process. Yes, they'll get through it without it, but isn't it better to give them what they should have as perfect supportive care in that process. So what this comes down to is it hinges upon how you use the word need. If you're saying it doesn't need it because its heart still beats and cracks on without it, then you're saying, no, it doesn't need it. If you're saying, yes, it needs UVB because it's so beneficial and it's so useful and it's so tied into how the actual animal works, in the same way that you would say, a dog doesn't need walks, but most of us would say, a dog needs a walk. If we're saying it in that sort of way, we're saying corn snakes need UVB because it's integral to having top of the line healthy corn snakes, then yes, I would say a corn snake needs UVB and I wouldn't keep one without UVB. If we look at the AZA, the AZA is now saying give snakes UVB. If we look at the zoos in the UK, birds and monkeys have to have access to UVB for the zoo to even get their licensing. So if we're quarrelling over whether a corn snake should even have UVB, when corn snakes are patient zero for UVB studies on snakes, and everything going off of that is based on corn snakes, if we're still arguing about corn snakes when it's already been proven how important it is to them, I think we all know the answer. If you're someone that's going to keep a corn snake without UVB, that's fine. You've made a decision to do that. But there's a difference between saying, hey, I know it's really good for them, but I've decided not to do it because I don't want to. That's different from saying it has no effect on them and they don't use it in any way. That's completely different. One is fair enough, go do you. The other is disingenuous. I hope that helps. If you like these types of videos, subscribe. There's more coming in the future and I'll see you in the next video.